Welcome to the Energy Live News Top 5. Today, we will be looking at the top five greenest buildings in the world. In at number five, the Museum of Tomorrow is a science museum in the city of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It was designed by Spanish neo-futurist architect Santiago Calatrava and built next to the waterfront at Pierre Mauá. Its construction was supported by the Roberto Marino Foundation and cost approximately 230 million race. The building was opened on December 17th, 2015, with President Dilma Rousseff in attendance. But why is it on our list? Well, it features solar panels that move with the sun to maximize energy. It also collects rainwater and has a pump system that takes cold water from Guanabara Bay to use for the air conditioning. In at number four, the Pixel Building in Melbourne, Australia, built in 2010, isn't just an office. It is one of the greenest buildings in the country and maybe the most colourful. It has solar panels and vertical wind turbines on the roof of the building, which also collects rainwater to use for showers and toilets. The toilets in the building use a 20th of the water used in typical systems because they use a vacuum technology for flushing. One last thing about the toilet system, the sewage is used to produce methane that can then heat the building. Lovely. In at number three, Bosco Verticale, or Vertical Forest, is a pair of residential towers in the Porta Nuova district of Milan, Italy. Bosco Verticale is one of the biggest European redevelopment projects, consisting of two residential towers. The largest is 26 floors and 110 metres high, and the smaller tower is 18 floors and 76 metres high. These tree-packed high-rises help cities built for density add more housing and infrastructure, while improving air quality. The 20,000 trees and perennial plants in the buildings will capture approximately 44,000 pounds of carbon each year. With more than 90 species inhabiting the space, the building's biodiversity is expected to attract new bird and insect species to the city. The building is self-sufficient thanks to renewable energy supply from solar panels and the use of filtered wastewater to sustain the building's plant life. In at number two, Shanghai Tower, located in Shanghai, China, is a 128-storey, 632-metre tall skyscraper. It is the world's second tallest building and had an estimated construction cost of 2.4 billion US dollars. The design of the tower's glass facade, which completes a 120-degree twist as it rises, is intended to reduce wind loads on the building by 24%. This reduced the amount of construction materials needed. The Shanghai Tower used 25% less structural steel than a conventional design of a similar height. The majority of the tower's energy is provided by conventional power systems, but 270 vertical access wind turbines located in the facade and near the top of the tower are capable of generating up to 340,000 kilowatt hours of supplementary electricity per year and are expected to provide 10% of the building's electrical needs. The double-layered insulating glass facade was designed to reduce the need for indoor air conditioning. In addition, the building's heating and cooling systems use geothermal energy sources. In at number one, Powerhouse Bratikaya, also known as Amar Baki, is a combined heat and power, waste to energy plant and sports facility in Amar, Copenhagen, Denmark. Opened in 2017, it partially replaced the nearby old incineration plant in Amar, which is in the process of being converted from coal to biomass. It is estimated to have cost $670 million and is expected to burn 400,000 tonnes of municipal solid waste annually. It also houses a sports facility designed by Bayek Ingalls Group with an 85 metre tall sloped roof that doubles as a year-round artificial ski slope, hiking slope and climbing wall, which is open to the public. The plant is designed to change between operating modes with a maximum power capacity of 63 megawatts and between 157 to 247 megawatts of district heating capacity, depending on local heat demand and power price. 
it produces more clean water than it uses. And because of filtration and other technologies, sulfur emissions are said to be reduced by 99.5% and nitrogen oxides by about 95%. It is claimed to be the cleanest incineration plant in the world. What do you think of this list? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more top fives and news.